All right, so today we're going to be talking about adding some sound effects to everything that we have going on inside of our game right now. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go into the opengameart.org. If you go into this website right here, uh, you're going to go over to Browse Sound Effects, and we're going to want to download this for projectile launches. You're going to go ahead and download it from right here, and you're going to extract the folder somewhere, and it'll look like this when you're done. We're also going to want to go into Sound Effects, we're going to want two high quality explosions. We're going to want to click on the explosions.7z right there. And you're going to want to extract that somewhere as well. Then you can go into Godot. We're going to want to be adding a new child node to the player. And remember, any time that you are adding some new functionality and you don't have a node that currently pulls that off, normally Godot has something built into it already to do it for you. We're going to want an audio stream player.2D, or 2D, not dot 2D. We're going to rename it to laser sound. And we're going to drag in one of the launches into here. We can drag in all four sounds that we got. We want to drag them into the game like so. And we're probably not going to want them inside of our scenes. We can just drag them right into our RES folder for now. And we can make a new folder for it right after that. Call it sounds like that. Now, if you take this any of these sounds and you're on the laser sound node, you can drag them right over to the stream right here. Then you can simply just hit playing and it'll play the sound for you. Just click it on and off to play it anytime you want. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the ice ball on this for now. We're also going to want our explosion sounds inside of here. And then we're going to go into the script here. We're going to go to where we're shooting. You can see it over here in the is action just released. I shoot, right? And then we can simply go laser sound dot play and use the built-in function to play that sound every time we are spawning one of these bullets. Now if we hit the play button we should be able to just shoot a bullet out. Boom. We have laser shots. Now we might want to be a little bit quieter. It sounds pretty loud right now and to do that you kind of make this go into a negative number like so. This volume.db thing. That sounds a little bit better. And there we go. That's pretty good to go at this point. Now Remember that the bullet itself is actually scripting in the destruction, and this is not best practice by the way. You should actually have it so that the bullet triggers an event within the enemy and makes that happen, like runs a function in the enemy or sends some kind of signal or does something. But for now, we're doing it all inside of here, and we need to actually have the enemy have a sound effect, though. So let's go ahead and do an audio stream, and let's go ahead and make it the explosion sound. Now we're going to want to go play a couple explosion sounds to figure this out. So let's go ahead and drag this explode.wave. That sounds pretty good. Let's try out this mini. Now the mini actually sounds a little bit better I think even. So and we'll get rid of the playing on there. We'll go into the bullet script and where the enemy is just getting destroyed right here. Right before the Q free goes off, we're gonna actually say body dot. You know what? It's actually gonna be kind of difficult to make it play the sound in here from the bullet itself. So actually, we should actually build the function in at this point. So let's go ahead and do it. So we'll build in a quick function inside of here basically takes in an attack. So let's make a function shot or something like that. Something simple. And we'll make a variable for it like health or something. And we'll set it equal to 1 in the case of the enemies that we currently have. Health minus equals 1. We also want to play if health is less than or equal to 0 then we want to Q free and we also want to play our sound so before we even Q free we want to do explosion sound put this little money sign in front of it and we're gonna say dot play like that and then we're gonna go back to the bullet and we're going to sum everything up as in body dot shot let's see what happens now Hmm, it's not working. It's because it's getting Q freed. That's the big thing. So I took out Q free so they're not going to get destroyed from that anymore. Yeah, it is because it's getting Q freed. 
Okay, so because it's being queue freed, it's not happening like that. So instead of that, we're going to have to mess with this a bit more. Hmm, how should we do this? Because we want to be able to destroy that ship, right? So I guess this is a good time to play in an animation and make that animation actually make the the uh, explosive sound play. So let's take off the explosive sound altogether on on this this whole node right there, and let's go back to actually just destroying him, right? So we'll go with uh, Q free, right? But before he's Q freed like that, and the problem is here before was he was getting freed up and then they weren't actually like able to do anything other than freed up because, you know, everything was getting destroyed. So what we're going to do in order to fix this is we're going to actually make something new in this scene right here. We're going to create a new something and something, and we're going to add a new node, and it's just going to be a simple uh, sprite, right? And this sprite is going to be called explosion, and explosion is going to be an explosion. And now you see it's five animations across and this is a really good opportunity to actually find out how to uh, do an entire animation like so. Now on this explosion we're going to want to do the sound effects on here. So we're going to write in audio because that's what we know that we need. We're going to put in that explosive mini sound that we had in there before and we're going to name this explosion sound right and the moment this comes this explosion comes into existence we know that we automatically want explosion sound to be playing but we can do that through our animator so we're going to add another node and as soon as you start writing animator you're going to see some things pop up onto here you're going to see animated sprite animation player and all this other stuff animated sprite is specifically if you have separate images that you want to animate together but if when you have an image like we just had where we had to like set the number of frames inside of it you want to use actual the actual animation player I like to rename mine Anim, that's just an old Unity thing that I've uh, inherited from time. And then you want to actually create an animation. We're going to say New on here by clicking the animation, cl clicking New. We're going to call it Explosion, like so. You're going to add a track, and whatever you add onto this is going to be able to be manipulated over time. So we're going to hit Property Track. We're going to see a bunch of symbols and stuff pop open. And just remember that you want to actually click on your explosion itself, because that is your actual sprite. The part of the explosion that you want to be messing with is the frame. Now remember if we go back on the explosion and we start messing with this frame, you can see by messing with this number right here you are actually animating it, right? And you'll see these keys appear and that's because I had it so that this animator is actually tracking this explosion node right here. So if I hit this key right here you'll see that it pops up right there, right? And say I want it just to happen over the span of a second. So let's go to like 0.2 and then we'll go one frame up. Like so, right? You see on 1.2 it kind of pops up like that. Let's go to 0.4, go another frame up, 0.6, go another frame up, and then 0.8, let's go another frame up like that. And then let's hit the play button see what happens there. It's actually not quite fast enough. So let's have it happen like this instead. And let's have it be 0.9 seconds long or so to kind of shorten it up a little bit and see what happens. Yeah, still not quite fast enough. So we'll go to these times and write 0.05 on this first one. We'll zoom in on these because right now it is just a little bit too slow. 0.15 0.2, and then let's make it happen over a span of 0.2 seconds to see what happens, or 0.3 seconds or so, right? Then see what happens. Boom. Much faster. I think I like that one a bit better. So let's make it like um, 0.27, right? So that it just goes off. There we go. But another thing that we can do is we can add another track, another property on here. We can add the explosion sound onto this, and we want to actually hit this bool is playing right on there and we're gonna go backwards like this we're gonna right click and hit insert key we're gonna click on this little uh, square box right here and then we're gonna click this value on right there now the problem is that this explosion sound goes on a lot longer than the 
actual explosion animation. It goes on for 1.1 seconds, right? So in order to kind of deal with this whole thing and make it so that the sound has an actual amount of time to play for the whole thing, because we want that to happen, we're actually just going to make it so that the sprite disappears at this point. And as a challenge, why don't you guys go ahead and see if you can figure out how to do that by adding another track into the animator. Animator. All right, so if you look, go ahead and look at this, and you just gotta kinda look around on here somewhere on the sprite to see if there's anything that can make it so that you can, whether or not you can see it, right? And so what we'll do is we'll actually add, and you simply go over here and you can hit this key right here and it'll add a new track of texture right there, right? At this point right here, what we'll do is we'll simply clear it and then we'll set it up so this whole animation is about the same length as the sound effect, 1.15 like so. And then we'll play the whole thing like that, right? Now the problem is that it doesn't work out all that well because the texture is not set on here. So, if we go back to here and we again set this texture back up right here at the beginning of this like this and then we key that in like that then if we go to the animator real fast and we hit the play button on the animation you'll see the explosion kind of fully go off and then the explosion will actually vanish after that point right there because we made this full-blown animation now if we simply make a script in here for the explosion Explosion.gd is good. And then we're going to go ahead and delete all these comments like so. We're going to save that up. And then we're going to go over to in and we're going to go on node. We're going to go on to where the signals are at. And the goal here is to make it so that, that we can then get rid of the explosion object at the end. So when the animation's finished, we're going to go over to explosion like so. And then we're going to get rid of this. Now it passes in the animation name so that you can test to see which animation name because we only have one animation that is functioning at all, ever, uh, that's going to be running this script on our explosion. We actually wanted to queue free this object if that animation ever finishes without ever using the anim name because we just don't need that to be used. And that's it for making this explosion occur. So, at this point right here, what we want to do is we want to save this branch as a scene. We're going to go into our scenes. Explosion.tsen is perfect. We're going to save it, and then we're going to delete that explosion node out of our normal something, it doesn't matter scene. And then we're going to go to the enemy. We're going to go over to... Oh, and I forgot one more thing from the explosion. So we, we'll open up the explosion scene real quick because I totally forgot to actually play the animation right off the bat. Go over to anim. We go current is, uh, yeah, there we go. Current animations that, eh, that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll actually go over here and on function ready on our sprite itself. We'll literally just go ahead, aka on the explosion, the script that's attached to that, we'll just go ahead and go anim.play and explosion is what we want to play. And so as soon as it comes about, it will go ahead and play that for us. And then as soon as it's done playing that animation, this object will disappear forever. So we'll go over to the enemy and we want to load up that thing on the enemy itself. So explosion. We'll just make death. <laughs> All right. Bar death equals preload. R E S. Scenes. Explosion. Dot T S C N. I hope I spelled that all right because my auto, what should we call it? Fill complete. Auto complete did not auto complete for me. And then as soon as our health is down like that, we want to actually go ahead and create the var e or something like that is equivalent to death.instance get parent 
add child e e dot position equals position and then q free so we should have that whole explosion made and that should complete our explosion and therefore complete our killing of enemy ships let's go ahead and test it out really fast we see some shots we made there we go and he exploded into a fiery death so did he all right so with that we have made some sound effects in here we have things exploding to fiery deaths we have an animation for an explosion it's a was a bit of a longer video. I covered two different ideas inside of one video instead of just one simple idea. Um, yeah, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I really needed to do both those things to really complete the sound effects system. Um, with that, we don't have much left to do inside of here. I'm going to probably make... Oh, man. I don't even know what's next now, actually. I'll probably balance out the game a little bit better, make a second board for fun. And then I think that's about it. I think that's what we're going to do. And then the series is complete and you should be, you know, have your feet wet in Godot. <laughs> and let me know in the comments down below what you want to see inside the next series. I'm planning on doing some more Godot tutorials. I'm still working on my Unity tutorials in case you're one of the people that follow along with that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks so much for spending this time with me. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys.